This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here. Oh, this is the show where we talk with people in and around independent pro wrestling. And myself, a video professional here in the Pittsburgh area with the IWC, the RWA, and other things around IndieWrestling.us. And we've got a great interview lined up for you today. Please subscribe to the show. Look for the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube pages. And follow that uh, Facebook page, especially for Wrestling Mayhem Show, so you can uh, find out when we're doing live streams like this. And you can be in the chat room like so many are tonight. So, so <laughs> Billy is in there, Marcus. Uh, Jason's in there. I think I saw Jackson Argos in the chat tonight Wowee. dropping in. And, of course, please uh, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. There's this as well as all the other recap shows, including the Midweek War, the Raw Wrap-Up, and, of course, the main Wrestling Mayhem show uh, as well. So uh, we got a great guest. We're uh, uh, completing the trifecta of Team Storm here today as uh, uh, Jack Pollock joins us in studio here in Beachview. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Finally, right? Finally. And, and just several days after a brutal brutal cage match by the way which of course we'll get into a little bit uh, uh, later on can't wait to talk about that yeah showing a little, a little bit of, if you're on video some of the some of the some of the wounds are still still a little fresh uh, a few days well, about four days ago right yeah as of this recording so um but anyways hey first you know let's do we gotta do the icebreaker and people maybe they don't know who who jack pollock is uh so what is uh what is your first memory of wrestling Oh boy. Uh, my first memory of wrestling probably goes back to being a kid and I'm not like RC where I'll say like my first memory is just wrestling. Um, but I can, I can remember with my older brother playing with the old LJN figures, uh, the big rubber WWF figures and the old Nintendo wrestling games with Hulk Hogan ripping his shirt off and just loving it back then. And Never thinking in a million years that this is something that I could actually aspire to do. You mm -hmm. know, it was just something that was on TV as a kid and like just captured your imagination. And that's all it was back then. That's de that's my first memory. But uh, wrestling is one of those things that like you either say you want to do it forever and then you get into it. And for me, it wasn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of fell out for a while. Uh, back in the day, it's like. I want to say in the mid nineties when wrestling kind of got terrible, it felt like I fell out of wrestling and it was sports. It was baseball. It was basketball. It was soccer, um, cartoons. I got fat, you know, that kind of stuff that mm -hmm. wrestling didn't, didn't really matter anymore. And then the NWO was one of those things that kind of brought me back into wrestling. So as a teenager, the NWO, the attitude era, that sort of stuff, that's where I really got into wrestling at that point in my life. We we talked a little, a little bit. Um, you've been uh, as far as see, you know seeing IWC and, and things like that. Like you've you've been aware of indie wrestling for a long, long time here. Oh yeah, I mean the the first show I ever went to, um, I went to an IWC show in Butler at Hyman Hall the night before. I think it was WrestleMania 18, and it was Jimmy Vegas versus Sandman mm -hmm. for the IWC World Heavyweight Title. Uh, CJ Sensation was the first wrestler I ever saw back in the day. And when he was all glittery with his uh, leather pants on. Oh, geez. Um, and actually, my church youth group, uh, like the pastor, uh, Trevor Lowe, uh, was a wrestler. And he wrestled for IWC on that show because he was from Butler. So, like, I went and I bought his shirt. And it was just cool to see a guy that, like, I talked to as a human being that was actually a wrestler. I was like, that's really cool. Um, and ever since then, I mean, I was hooked. I was going to IWC shows when they were, would run in Butler, when they used to run at CCAC South. Um, when they started running in Elizabeth, it's like I was going to IWC all the time. Um, same thing with PWX. I used to go out in the old Sportatorium days. 
uh, whenever I could, I would go to a wrestling show. Mm hmm. Is, is that the point? Oh, by the way, BC Steel in chat room, IWC and Hinman Hall, long live Bob Cup and CJ Sensations. Yes, with pants. Bob Cup. Bob Cup of WBUT, uh, uh, the radio station okay. up there. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so, so was that at the point where, where becoming a wrestler kind of seemed like a, an achievable goal? Seeing indie wrestling at that level, knowing somebody that was a wrestler? Um, I'm not sure. Like for the longest time, I used to say I wanted to get involved in wrestling, mm -hmm. but I was overweight, um, and I was like, I don't think I could ever be an actual wrestler. And I was always trying to figure out how I could get involved in wrestling in some capacity. And then I don't know what happened. You know, changed my diet and started working out, and things started going differently. That I was like, oh, maybe this is something I could do. And then I think just being around people. Um, because I was friends with Marcus Pastorius, who at the time used to do filming with Tony F. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the old IWC days. So he knew all the wrestlers. So I got to talk to guys. Like, I've known Jimmy Vegas now since 2002, 2003. I knew CJ. I knew Justin Idol. I knew those kind of guys. So knowing those guys, I was like, maybe this is something I could actually do. And something that wasn't a dream that then, then became an actual dream, you mm -hmm. know? Awesome. So, um, so, so wh wh where did you, uh, decide to school? Back originally, my goal was to go to Shawn Michaels wrestling Academy. <laughs> like that was, that was it back in like the early two thousands. I was like, mm -hmm. mom, dad, I'm going to train to be a wrestler. I'm going to, to Texas. I'm going to go to Shawn Michaels wrestling Academy. And they're like, yeah, whatever. You're not going to do that. You have to go to school first. So I ended up going to college, mm -hmm. uh, and I studied art and communications at Pitt. And from there, the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy shut down. And then Storm Wrestling Academy opened up. I was like, this is where I got to go. Because I loved Lance Storm in ECW. His little run in WCW when he you know, was holding three titles at once into WWF at the time. It's like, I loved him. I was like, I want to go there. So that's once he opened up the school, it was, all right, just start saving up as much money as you can. You know, get prepared as much as you can. And then eventually I landed up in Calgary. That's awesome. And, and of course, you know, we, we talked with RC and Jackson about their experience and their experiences have been in like the last two years, basically. You, you were you were a little bit ago. Yeah, uh, I graduated in July of 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, I went up there and it was three months, five days a week in, in the ring for three to four hours a day. I mean, it, like they said, it's it was a full time job up there. It's like get up in the morning, you go and train, mm -hmm. you, you go home nurse yourself back as much as you could from being beat up go to the gym for you know a couple hours a night watch wrestling all night They're like um i was lucky enough that i actually didn't live in the house with all the storm kids uh like rc did and i think maybe argus did as well uh, i had like my own studio apartment that i really lucked out because i was very very late in the process of getting into that class it was i remember it was my birthday and i decided i was like well you're either going to do this or you're not like, and if you're going to do it now, and I went and applied for a loan and got it that day, sent away the $500 down payment. Uh, he accepted me and I came home, I think it was Easter weekend. And I just remember, I told my mom, I was like, mom, I got good news and bad news for you. And she looked at me and she goes, you got your girlfriend pregnant. And I go, no, <laughs> absolutely not, mom. And she goes, you're going, you're going to become a wrestler. And I was like, Wow like that's your second guess but that's amazing yes i am i go i'm leaving in three weeks um and i can just remember my dad like shaking his head putting his hands in his head just like well he's gonna do it i guess i can't stop him and the next day just calling my boss at work being like uh hey i'm gonna be leaving for calgary here in a couple of weeks calling my landlord like hey i'm breaking my lease now and trying to set everything up just moving my stuff, figuring out a uh, travel situation, uh, you know, lodging. And one day in Pittsburgh, the, the next day in Calgary, except actually it was like when I was traveling to Calgary, Calgary got hit with a blizzard in the end of April. Oh, geez. Yeah, it was crazy. I left Pittsburgh. But then again in Canada. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I leave Pittsburgh and legitimately I think we're going through this heat wave where it's 85, 90 degrees. And I fly from Pittsburgh to Minnesota to Seattle and I'm sitting in Seattle's airport and they go like the all flights to Calgary are canceled. And so I have to stay in Seattle for two days because there's a big blizzard that 
I can't get to Calgary. And I finally get there and there's no snow anywhere. And I was like, what? I don't understand what's going on here. And that, that, that was just Calgary, I guess, you know, one day a snowstorm, the next day it's green, it's nice, it's beautiful. You go, well, this is what the next three months of my life's going to be, you, you know, <laughs> leading in the summer. <laughs> yeah. You know, Pittsburgh's dealing with 85 degree, you know, in, in May and it's like 25 in Calgary. I have a hoodie. I don't come prepared. I'm just thinking to myself like, oh, it's, it's spring, almost summertime. Like, why would I take winter clothes? You know, then off in the distance, it's a Coors, Coors Light commercial. The Rocky Mountains are there, you know, snow covered and all that. I'm like, well, this is, this is a different world out here. I love, I love that. Like you took out a loan to go to the wrestling school. Like that's the first I've kind of heard, like, you know, I raised like, I've heard of people doing interesting things to raise the money. Oh, I, I mean, I did research studies. Right. Um, I, I did research studies to go to WrestleMania in my life. Like I tried Mm -hmm. to do an enema research study at one point in my life. There is somebody else on the IWC roster previously that that did that as well. Uh, I donated plasma, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've done, they like the research study where it was kind of like the Tiger Woods motion cap where they put the balls on you and you're throwing stuff just because they want to see really? our, yeah range of motion and stuff like that. Uh, any way to make a dollar uh, to get to a wrestling show or to get to Calgary, I would do that. It makes me wonder how many people have access to Uber and Lyft and that's how they're paying for wrestling. So oh, if that would have been a thing you know back I mean? in the day, like, I would have done that. Like there's so much other opportunity. They just go make some cash. And, yeah. and, and that seems like it, which probably is also flooding wrestling schools to be honest too. So, I mean, I'm still looking at research studies every day. I'm still like, ah, oh, I could still use some more money. I could use some new gear. Yeah. Uh, a new pair of yeah. boots. Yeah. I got thumbtacks in my boots right now. I need a new pair already. I can tell, um, anything to make a buck. We have uh, we we have comments, and I love that we we end up with uh, comments in the chat room from all uh, former guests on the show. Uh, <laughs> Jackson Argo says Lance is a, ro- a robot. His routine hasn't cha- changed in seven years. Okay, <laughs> I can't vouch for that. I haven't seen him in seven years. Uh, and uh, Matt Connor says, "Tell Pollock not to uh, be so uh, cavalier about everything." Oh, you shut the hell up, Connor. <laughs> Um, so, so you go from there and, and, you know, obviously we've seen kind of the story with RC and Jackson Go and check out their episodes. If you guys need to catch up on that, of course, but, um, you definitely had a very different path. Oh, uh, you, you didn't just land in IWC. <laughs> no, no, I did not just land in IWC. Unfortunately, you didn't, uh, you didn't point to the stands where you sat the year before with Ryback. <laughs> no, I didn't have any, any cool stories like that. Um, when I came back, it was very difficult to get into any company locally for some reason for me. Um, I always feel like part of it falls on me for not hustling more. Uh, but another part, it's like IWC had their own training school at the time. Mm -hmm. PWX had their own training school and there weren't many guys coming back to this area that weren't training in these companies. And and I got to think around, so around 2010, like that was a probably a decent crop of guys coming out there. Guys like, Probably facade, Shula. Yeah, I mean, all, all those guys were, yeah. were in IWC, you know. Um, and like like I said, I was friends with Marcus Pastorius, and he gave me Idol's phone number. So I tried to get in contact with Idol just to do open ring mm-hmm. or anything like that. And like kind of kept getting blown off in a way where it was like, well, we're not really doing open ring right now. We only do training this night and this night. And it was kind of just geared more towards their kids. Yeah. So it was hard to get in there. I tried... Um, I tried getting into KSWA for a while just because like I live in the city of Pittsburgh and it was close. I could take a bus if I had to to get to the show. Uh, That didn't work. And then one day at work, I was talking to a buddy who knew Shirley Doe and he was like, hey, I think Doe does training out at PWX. You should go talk to him. I was like, sure. You know, why wouldn't I go do that? Mm -hmm. So I show up to a PWX show at the old Renzi Park uh, in the log cabin. The pavilion. Yeah. Yeah. They have been to Filmed a couple of shows up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I show up there and the, the show ends and I see Tony Johnson walking around. So I thank Tony Johnson uh, for my career in Pittsburgh here. Uh, I knew Tony just from KSWA. And so I was like, oh, my God, Tony Johnson, you know, big fan, blah, blah, blah. This is my story. Who do I have to talk to backstage just to, you know, get seen, get a chance here in this company? And so Tony takes me backstage, introduces me to Quinn Magnum. Uh, we start talking a little bit there and, uh, Ryan Mitchell at the time who was working for PWX over here is my story. And he knew a girl that I trained with cause, uh, she got signed to the fed. I want to say maybe two classes out 
after we were done. And she was actually uh, Sterling's valet back in FCW days. Okay. Uh, so he knew her. So he called her and she vouched for me. And I showed up to PWX the next show, set up the ring, set up, you know, chairs, tables, all that sort of stuff. Had a tryout match with Chris LaRusso, uh, which at the time I thought was pretty decent. But, you know, I'm sure if I look back on it, it was garbage. Like it was the first time I was actually in a ring in a year and just kept on showing up to PWX, you know, trying to trying to do whatever I could get in the ring whenever I could setting up but i just stood on the patio for six seven months doing nothing watching wrestling shows uh and so that's the story of how i eventually get into pwx once they open up the wrestleplex and i debuted i believe it was end of november of 2011. Mm -hmm. so it took almost a year and a half after school to get a match anywhere in Jeez. pittsburgh uh while Jackson Argos and R.C. Dupree show up and they're on IWC shows right out the gate. Jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, a, a Jackson Argos career and a half. I oh, think, yeah, just, right? just yeah. locks into everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's some great stuff happening in here. Hashtag patio life and other things that I don't know if there's any meaning to them. Um, Ryan Rain asks, who is your favorite fourth longest reigning PWX heavyweight champion? <laughs> Ryan Rain forever. Rain forever. Awesome. Um, now, and we were talking about a little bit before, like my, my first experience uh, with you was in uh, RWA. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember the next trending topic. Yeah. But you, you had something before that. Yeah. I mean, my so my first PWX match was at the end of November. But I had my first couple of matches that summer at RWA. Uh, when I was working under the gimmick of the, uh, the human element, it was a great idea. Uh, when, uh, Marcus Mann and myself came up with it one night at the bar drinking, uh, cool tights that were airbrushed with, uh, like a molecular breakdown on I it. Need to, I need to find this cause I'm pretty sure I was probably there. I'm I pretty guarantee. sure we do have it in the library. Uh, my debut was against a, a young Oro Miedo, uh, who was a masked luchador. Uh, I don't want to give away his secret identity, but later on I was able to tell a really cool story with him. Um, and I worked a few matches with RWA and then just took off with PWX, mm -hmm. you know? Um, crazy. <laughs> um, and, and of course, uh, you know, after all these, he ended up with the IWC um, as part of this Team Storm mm -hmm. thing going on. Um, kind of the replacement in, in, in this situation too. Uh, yeah, it seems that way. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, of course, Brian Bowers was, was originally there for whatever reason that, that, that fell apart. And, but we still had Jackson and, 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 uh, RC. Yeah. Um, I can remember at a, at a point last summer when I saw the first photo of Argos and RC and Bowers, and they were all wearing their storm shirts and I text Bowers and I go, looks like someone's missing from this photo. Uh, and he's, he's like, dude, it'd be so cool if you showed up here, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I go, yeah, but you know, I got my stuff at PWX. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, telling the story right, right now with Brandon K. Um, but who knows where, what the future holds. And we just kept on talking and throwing out ideas, you know, between each other. And eventually life got to Bowers where it was, he just wanted to step away. Mm -hmm. And I go, that's good, dude. Like, there's so many guys in wrestling, even on the local scene, that's like they're bitter, they're angry, they hate being here. And it's like, if you don't want to be here, don't be here. Mm -hmm. You know, not to sound like a dick, but it's like this stuff hurts. And don't put your body through it if you don't want to do it, you know. Um, and it was just time for him to walk away for a while. And I showed up at the IWC training school one night and I had met Argos at a Black Diamond show back, I want to say, August of last year. And I'd never met RC. So I meet RC that night. Um, I, I'm going to say it was an awestruck of me because uh, apparently RC was like the biggest Jack Pollock fan in Pittsburgh before he ever <laughs> met me, uh, which I love. And uh, we start talking, we start spitballing some ideas and it was just like, you know, why don't we do this? You know, whether Bowers was going to stick around or not, it was like, hey guys, I'm looking for a way in. It's time for me to, to leave where I'm at, you know, and go to the next level. Let's see what we can do. And it's just like, we, we all got lucky that the longest tenured storm trainee in the area besides Plato, but Plato disappeared for a long time. 
uh, it was like I could just fill Bauer shoes, and it's like it made sense in the long run. I at least I feel like it did. That's awesome. People are gushing over you in the chat room right now. Actually, oh, awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, Magnum CK uh, says Pollock has one of the best attitudes in wrestling. Uh, we need a hundred JPs. Yes, thank you, thank there you, Magnum. You there you go. Um, our our good buddy Bobby of J Town from says OMG is Jack Pollock, <laughs> and uh, and a lot of other great stuff going on in here. Uh, Jackson says he's lucky to have you. Oh, that's not what he was telling me on the phone yesterday. No, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Um, actually speaking, I do have a question here. I needed. I was I was asked to bring up here, do, 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 and I'll have that for you in a second. Um, so, uh, I, I was told to ask you, what's your favorite sports utility vehicle? Who's, who's asking this question? I mean, he said, he said, if you're confused, I was told it was a Kia Sportage and that's it. Nothing else. Leave it at that. Don't wrap me out. <laughs> uh, I have no experience with the, the Kia Sportage. I do know that someone else does and good for you, Garbs. We're very proud of you. <laughs> I throw in, throw in the inside jokes out there, um, but anyways, so so we uh, unfortunately don't have any pictures here. But you said we you're kind of uh, wearing a little bit of the uh, the uh, uh, leftover scars from from Saturday night's uh, War Games match. You your your first cage match. Yeah, first cage match. Uh, Team Storm's first cage match. One year in for them. Mm -hmm. uh, almost six for me. Uh, so good for you guys. Very proud of you to get a cage match as quickly as it took me six years and war games of all like, yeah i mean and that it, it's definitely it you know you know, looking in it, it's it seems like a very complicated affair uh especially with the elimination setup that we had on saturday night yeah i mean it uh, definitely complicated to to come up with uh especially because it was the smaller ring at mm -hmm. the same time oh yeah um and i mean iwc usually uses an 18 foot ring that was a 16 foot ring so having lots of bodies in there made it harder to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but awesome match. I mean, I, I had a, on a, lo in a losing effort, I had a blast, you know, uh, as a fan of wrestling to finally be in a steel cage. I was like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Like the moment I walked out and like the crowd, like half of them started booing, half of them kind of started cheering like, Oh, like it's getting real now. Like Pollock's out here. It's like, let's, let's fight. And it's like, Holy shit, that's a steel cage. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, this is really cool because it's something, you know, uh, working PWX, I worked so many, you know, fans bring the weapons, street fights, you know, no holds barred, uh, I quit matches, stuff like that, that it's like, we couldn't put a still cage in that building. The, the ceiling was just too small. Mm -hmm. So to show up and get to be in that cage match, it's like, yes, this is the epitome of everything of a gimmick match that I would want to be in. And it's been a staple for for a good while with IWC, and, and it felt like we were talking about a little bit of kind of the flow of the show and everything, and, and to the point where I wasn't even worried about it having problems against Takeover that night. <laughs> that people would be at home. Oh, I mean, it was kind of like, taking on, like to to look out and and see after, especially after the rainstorm too, like mm. that biblical monsoon that we got. Uh, to look out and see, you know, that size crowd on a NXT Takeover night, and you just go like. Hey, they they want to see us kill each other tonight. So like, let's go out there and kill each other. Let's give them the best show we can because that's what they want. Um, definitely a cool cool little moment there. That's awesome. What did you learn from doing a cage match like that? Um, hmm. it hurts a lot more than you would think to be thrown into it. Uh, that's one thing, and um. It's not as sturdy as you think as well. Like the whole time I'm thinking to myself like, well, if I do this, I go up to the top and, you know, I don't go to the top off and so I'm, I'm clumsy. I go, well, at least I'll have the cage to kind of brace myself. And when I'm up there, I'm like, oh, this is this is definitely chain link that's going in and out. It's like, oh, just hold on for dear life and don't fall. Don't look like an idiot. <laughs> So in the end, don't look like an idiot. That's, that's like match. my motto for every match I have. Don't look like an idiot because I've definitely <laughs> looked like an idiot a bunch in wrestling. That's awesome. Um, what are you watching these days? Who uh, maybe out in the Indies or anything else you're catching that's kind of got your attention? Um, out on the Indies, I mean, for the longest time, I was a big Adam Cole fan. I don't want to sound like a Mark because he's, you know, was in the company and all that sort of stuff. But I, I've liked Adam Cole. I, when I talked to him the first time he showed up to IWC, I was like, hey, man. I saw you at Super Indie 11 back in 2011. I was like, I, I thought back then, I go, you're going to be, you know, 
next level. You're awesome. And he's like, Oh, thanks, man. It's like, ah, you hear that from everyone though. So like, it's cool. Uh, in terms of like WWE, I mean, I, I, I try to keep up with NXT as much as I can just cause I have the network. Mm -hmm. I don't have cable. Um, so I don't watch raw or SmackDown that much. Uh, I love Sami Zayn. I love John Cena. Um, Ray Wyatt's awesome. And then indie wise, ah, I just go to shows and I just watch them. There's, there's no one on the indies that I go like, ah, I got to see that guy. It's more just like I put a chair down next to the monitor. And if I'm not talking backstage to the guys about anything, I just sit there and watch the show as much as I can. Awesome. Yeah. What is the uh, best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you in your career so far? Uh, geez. Um, the best thing about indie wrestling has been it's the greatest escape from real life that i never realized that i needed um whenever things would get too serious for me uh it was like wrestling was always there mm -hmm. you know even as like a teenager and stuff like that uh it, it was always such an escape just go like oh it's two hours three hours on a monday night i got nitro i got raw you know wednesday thunder thursday smackdown uh, that I didn't have to deal with being me. And then it'll be five days of just garbage all week where you just go like, ah, I just don't want to do this. I don't want to deal with people anymore. And then Saturday night rolls around and you show up to the building and you see your friends, you get to go out there and, and entertain people, you know, have them boo you, have them cheer you. And it's just such a great feeling to have, have a crowd in the palm of your hand like that. Uh, and then the worst thing, um, the pain, uh, I would say the pain, uh, there, there was a while for, I want to say it was 2014 maybe that my right leg went numb on me every day for about six months. Jeez. Um, and I was going to a chiropractor and all that sort of stuff. Uh, just stupid stuff that I would do. Um, also the pain I'm in right now, uh, is the worst part from wrestling uh but like I, I love it uh i wouldn't want to be doing anything else just because real life sucks that's that's what i tell everyone at least awesome there's something going on about protein bars in the chat room right now okay i don't know i don't know if there's any context to this i, I maybe i'm not seeing the entire conversation <laughs> Okay, okay. What's going on? Do we have a question amongst this? Well, this? I, I don't think that's specifically a question. It's more BC Steel making commentary. Pollock's workout starts at 6 a.m. with a giant protein shake. Think McDonald's super size. Mm -hmm. Then he does arms, legs, cardio. Then he fights a bear. Then he pushes a train three miles. By that time, it's 8 a.m. and time for breakfast. True so, story. That's apparently how you train. <laughs> that's what that's how they do it in uh, in in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. In Calgary, seven days a week. That's seven what, days that, a week. That's what I do. A protein sheet, protein protein shakes and bear fighting. That's why BC Steel was my first manager ever, because he saw he saw a lot in Jack Pollock back in the early 2011s at PWX. There you go. He saw it in, in Jack Pollock. He believed. <laughs> Awesome. Um, you know, other than IWC, where obviously your mainstay there right now. Yeah. Um, where else can people uh, catch you on the uh, Indies? I'm a Russell Black Diamond. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh do we have we have something else oh. here? Oh. Producer Missy. There's a, uh, Billy Johnson just put in that he put in a question and we missed it with all the bear discussion. Uh, who was your best match or feud been within any company since you've been <sighs> doing a lot? Oh, geez. That's a really tough question, actually. Um, I've been really fortunate to work with a lot of talented guys in the area. Um, you know, I've uh, I feuded with Jimmy Nuts in VOW for the heavyweight title, which was awesome because Jimmy and I were kind of coming up at the same time. Uh, I feuded with Ryan Rain, which was awesome He because I won the, my first ever title against him back in the day. Shane Taylor, uh, Chris Taylor, oh, Gory uh palace um my best ever um uh, i'll probably always have uh, a sentimental part in my heart for the gory feud just because i had won the title as a baby face the crowd was turning on me and so i turned on them and we had built this whole thing with gory where eventually it led the fans bring the weapons in for 40 some minutes we had the crowd on their feet and 
you know, so similar to Cage Fury with the uh, Palace and I killing each other. It's like Gory and I killed each other as well. Um, and just that feeling of having the crowd give you that na 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 hey 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 goodbye chant as you're walking out and in my head i'm just thinking to myself like hey guys i'll see you in two weeks at the next show <laughs> but like that's kind of cool that i had pissed off a crowd that much because at one point that crowd was so rabid that like they were spitting on me and throwing stuff at me and like i had fans having seizures during matches back in the day really yeah i've had a fan have two seizures during two different two separate matches wait is this I think I heard about this. Uh, the one with Gory. Uh, one time with Gory and one time against Chris Taylor. Yes. Uh, remember uh, B Rax? Yeah, yeah. Uh, his mother. That's the one I heard about. Yes. Uh, so she had a seizure one time, and uh, it was during a match with Chris Taylor when I was being attacked, and I'm I'm selling my knee because the I was getting beat up, and it's intermission, and the, one of the fans comes down. And they're like, Jack, you have to come. Vicky's having a seizure and I'm like what am I supposed to do here like I'm hurt and it's intermission and I want to go backstage because I have stuff going on uh, and I'm just sitting there holding her hand like it's gonna be okay just take a deep breath you're gonna right, be right. fine do you really know what to do with the seizure yeah like I'm not a doctor you know I'm a hipster doofus what do you want from me so I'm sitting there and I'm holding her hand and uh the ambulance comes and they take her away and I'm upstairs and I have a second match that night. And at the end of the night, Shane Taylor is going to come out and murder me uh, because we're setting up Shane and I for a Pittsburgh street fight the next show. And I hear uh, through the grapevine that Vicky is not going to go to the hospital. She's telling the ambulance she wants to go back into the show. She's pulling a Mick Foley herself. You know, she's <laughs> she's getting out of the ambulance. And I go, somebody has to get her the hell out of here. I go, she's going to die tonight if she sees what happens at the end of the night. So they don't let her back in the building. And about uh, maybe maybe a year later, I'm having a match with Gory, and it's like the, the crowd's turned on me completely. They're ready for Gory to beat me and take the title. And something happens where I got a bloody nose. And Gory is just, he, he's over like crazy with the crowd. And I'm beating him up, and I touch my nose, and I see that I'm bleeding. And I see her just shaking like, hyperventilating shaking in the front row and somewhere there's footage of it and like you can see me go to her like calm down i'm okay i got this like i'm saying this to her as i'm hitting gory like in between like boom relax it's okay i'm, I'm fine and then like i look over and it's like she's shaking and they just collapse to the ground i'm just like holy shit like what's going on here <laughs> like this is crazy it's so re it was so real to her that night that she like once again, uh, you know, in an ambulance and like, this is insane. I mean, it's awesome though. At the same time, cause you got like, it was, right. we were that good that night that she was like, she would have died. She didn't, <laughs> she didn't pray. Praise God. Listen, when they say knock them dead out there, I don't know if that's what they meant. No, but no. I mean, we, I've almost done it twice, Jeez. maybe more, at least twice that I know of though. For that sure. we're aware of. Yes. Jeez. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to sorry i'm trying to parse some of these comments that are happening in here right now there's a lot happening when uh jackson says he loved your uh feud with mcfoley oh that son of a bitch, son of a bitch. <laughs> am i allowed to curse on this show yeah yeah we say the f word in the first uh, awesome like 10 seconds so uh, <laughs> missy's even uh laughing at half of this stuff so um <laughs> <laughs> so uh let's see if there's anything else i wanted to touch on here before we get out of here you, okay we'll, we'll we'll continue with the black diamond you yeah, know, you're uh, also over there yeah uh black diamond this uh this upcoming sunday which you know uh is the i believe it's the 14th anniversary show mm -hmm. we're doing a team storm open invitation Ooh. uh it'd be the first time you see team storm in its full capacity at black diamond as long as Locked and Loaded doesn't show up. <laughs> uh, I, I fought both of those two and lost to both of those two, so I hope they don't show up. Guys, you're not invited. Don't show up. Uh, also, in September, I have uh, Remix Pro Wrestling. I have a four-way ladder match against Gory, Ron Mathis, and Marion Fontaine for my Riot Championship. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's going to be crazy. Uh, not looking forward to that. That's going to be painful, I'm sure. And uh, Team Storm is about to debut for CKCW, Cleveland Night Championship Wrestling, on September 9th. 
trying to think where else we got. Taking the whole team on the road. I love uh, it. Yeah, you know, jump in a car. Let's go, fellas. Uh, on September 30th, I have Premier Championship Wrestling for the Tag Team Title Tournament. Uh, Peyton Graham and myself uh, will be in that, hopefully coming home with some gold. And I think that's that's where I'm at right now. We got another one from the chat room here. If you were in NXT right now, who would your ideal feud be with that's in there? Hmm. See, I'm not completely caught up with NXT right now. See, I say I keep up with it, but I'm not caught up. I just know what happened a little bit. Um, right now, you can pick anybody that's been in Ring of Honor the last four years. You're probably safe. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a little offended that I never got to wrestle Adam Cole uh, when he was at IWC. I thought we would have had a great match. Adam Cole and I thought we were very close friends. Um, geez. My the, the at the height of NXT when it was awesome back in the day, and not saying it's not awesome now. Uh, I would have loved to uh, been in the ring with Sami Zayn. Uh, I feel like Sami Zayn's like the the ultimate baby face. That I don't know what's going on right now with the the current product where he's at, but I back then I thought he was going to be the next Daniel Bryan, mm -hmm. and I was like that would be awesome to wrestle a guy like that. Um, and Kevin Owens back then, the, those those are the kind of guys that if I was in NXT and if they were still there, that's who I would want to feud with. Uh, the chat room wants it to be Aleister Black, Tommy well, End. Uh, what well, can the chat room ask? Can I ask them why? I'm always interested in this one. A lot of head kicks uh, in I'm, that one. I know. <laughs> I'm I'm down to be kicked in the head. There you go. I have a very hard skull. Oh wow, we're getting, we're getting a lot of good ones. Uh, we 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 touched on it a little bit, but uh, Dan Danielle's in here asking, um, uh, how do you feel after War Games and having Palace kick your butt? I don't really think Palace kicked my butt, per se. Uh, I'm feeling better now than I was then. Uh, having five thousand thumbtacks in your back isn't the best feeling. Uh, especially when some of them break off and you have guys in the backstage pulling out just oh. the little, the little tack parts. I've never heard of that. Happening. Yeah. Were yeah. They, were there cheap tacks? Uh, uh well, I mean like I definitely didn't splurge on grade a thumbtacks. No, you know? no. Uh, pulling them out of my skull wasn't fun. That's what you learned. Don't, don't cheap out on the thumbtacks. Yeah. You know, uh, get the best of the best, Ugh. but, uh, I'm feeling a little bit better. Every time people ask how I'm doing, I go like, uh, oh, you know, uh, it hurts not so much here, not so much here, but like right about here on my face, mm -hmm. uh, right where, uh, I got busted open from something. Uh, I don't know how I was just, go back to the tape and see where it started from. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I know the feeling of bleeding, uh, sometimes and I was stuck in my contacts and I was like, Oh, cool. This is blood. Nice. Uh, so thanks Danielle. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling great. Uh, back to the NXT power, Bobby, Bobby St. Oscar. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be, there you go. More, more head kicks, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, there's that. Um, also, uh, referee of that match, uh, Potter is saying he's still picking tacks out of his boots. I think he also had a, a yeah, he had hand one, injury of yeah, some sort. Along one, with one, that. one stuck in his hand. He had a, he had a boo-boo. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't make the three count until, until afterwards. Nope. Nope. Um, let's see. There's a couple more that popped out. Uh, Maybe you and you know calling that you fell back into the tax after the match. Yeah, <laughs> well the referees just couldn't hold me up. Right. right. You know. Well, they were half injured too, so there's that. So, all right. Uh, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me online Facebook at Jack Pollock, and on Twitter at J Paul's Beard because I have a beard, and uh, I'm not the best with social media. So if I wasn't a wrestler, I wouldn't have it. So I don't Instagram, I don't Snapchat, I don't do anything like that. So those are your two best places to find me at. All right. Thanks a lot for joining us here. We have completed the Team Storm trifecta. We're just going to have to have you guys back for Canadian Thanksgiving or something oh, in the future. That sounds fantastic. I mean, I don't know. Is, there, is, is Turkey involved at that point? Uh, I believe so. Uh, it's, it's similar to an American Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just less football. We'll have a mayhem feast of mm. sorts. Which will probably just be tacos from across the street. Let's be honest. Sounds delicious. Um, that's, that's still not a problem that, with that either. So uh, thank you so much. And of course, uh, please check them out and check out everything else going on at IndieWrestling.us. Literally, as we're 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 recording this and we're rendering the Cage Fury show, 
I had a computer right over there, and that'll be up on digital download if you guys are joining us live uh, very, very soon. Um, and, and of course, if you're checking this out later on the stream, uh, please check out IWC Black Diamond Remix Pro Wrestling, everything that uh, Jack's going to be uh, popping up at. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, until next time, guys, please support the new rest. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.